football grounds in England, in my opinion. This isn't going to be based off anything like capacity, club size, fans, how big they are. Like, who cares? This is going to be based on what really matters, like history and like looks and like how good it would feel to be like in this ground. Realistically, that's what it should be all about, and that's what we're going to talk about now. So, please comment your team's um, stadium name down below, and I'll let you know my opinion. I do know pretty much every stadium in the 92, and I do have an opinion on pretty much every single one. So, let me know, and I just want to say that. Um, thank you for the support. Realistically, to nearly 250 subscribers, it means the world. Uh, I love football and I love just talking about it, even if you don't care and you just think this guy's an idiot. Like, what's he talking about? Just, you know, hear me out, is what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, I'm also going to show a graph on screen, which makes me very sad. Um, it's a percentage of people not subscribed, so please do just subscribe and turn on post notifications. It helps me out so much. Um, but yeah, also. I did get a haircut, I don't particularly like it, it's alright, but yeah, just don't say out in the comments, or if you do, please, positive reinforcement. Tenth is Fratton Park, built in 1899, 22,000 seats, but who cares, this ground is phenomenal, it's got the T4 on one of the stands, it's got four stands which look completely different, have different heights, um, different ages to them, I just think it's phenomenal, it's in the heart of Pompey, um, in a working class area with Victorian terrace houses, like these are the streets to build football, people would go up on these streets hundreds of years ago, or go watch Portsmouth play and kick a ball around and just, yeah, it's a phenomenal ground and realistically it's a phenomenal ground for a phenomenal club as much as I've had our little rivalry with Pompey, I do absolutely think they should be in a high league and I do absolutely think they are a cracking club but we'll get on to ninth place now. Ninth place built in 1882, 32,000 capacity, it's Ewood Park. I can't explain it, just the red and blue of this ground, I don't particularly like Blackburn for the fact that they just had Alan Shearer, but realistically I can imagine the one small stand and being sat in that and then looking up to this modern yet so history filled ground and it would just give me shivers. I know I'm so passionate about this but football grounds for me is where it's at. This is my like little thing within football as much as I love everything I do that I just, I don't know, this is just what I love researching, looking up and just giving you my opinions about but yeah this ground to me is everything. Um, for this like city or not even a city for this town Blackburn isn't a rich area it's working class and this to me would be like if I lived there this would be my home in the eighth place built in 1892 39,000 it's Goodison Park the royal blue of the colouring the like the modern feel like on the outside the ground with the big blue wall and the Everton badge just stuck right on it the two pillars just everything about it yet when you go in the inside of the ground it's so close to the pitch and so like small feeling but in a good way as in like there's the white pillars and you just feel like you're so compact and you so like feel like you're within the club if that's possible and yeah I love this and just walking up that like terraced area that like like working class like estate if you will would just be phenomenal on a match day um, but yeah, I do really like the stadium. I hate the fact that they're knocking it down. I hate the fact that clubs feel the need to build these new stadiums. But I do understand why. I do understand that they sell out. I just think, what a shame to knock down this beautiful ground. 1855, this was built. And it's coming in at 7th place. And it's Bramall Lane. What a ground. Like, I don't know how to explain it. But it just feels, I don't know. Like, to look at this is unbelievable. The one stand that really does do it for me is, it's, I think it could be classified as a cop, a bit like what Hillsborough's got, but with the two white pillars, and it reads out S-U-F-C, um, and that's what does it for me. And also the outside, when it's got the red and the white, like, bollards, if you will, with the, like, white little, like, pillars going up it. Yeah, just everything about it, it's unbelievable. The mighty blades written across uh, and the, the one ground in the middle with the little triangular thing on the top I don't know it reminds me a lot of Hillsborough but I do really love it like so much sixth place and you couldn't do your favorite stadiums or your the best stadiums without putting Old Trafford on there 74,000 seats like listen to that 74,000 yet yeah, this was built in 1910 
they have managed to stay in this ground for 110 years and sell out 72,000 seats. The fact that you're going to have a ground so historic, so history filled, success filled, and yet not modern, and yet not like, oh, let's build this massive ground because we've got loads of money. Like, this has been developed over time and it just merged so well. Like, the whites on the top. Um, of the ground and then the pure like blood red in the middle like this is a place where like you don't want to go if you're like the other team like it's a place so like I don't know like I would if I was a club I would be scared to go here Man United are this massive club and realistically they have fallen off recently but just everything about this ground is it screams Manchester it screams like success and Champions Leagues and everything but yeah, Stratford End is unbelievable and just this ground in general is phenomenal. Bit biased, 5th place, uh, built in 1997, 49,000 seats is the Sol. I couldn't not put it on this list, but if I'm being unbiased, it's not the best stadium to look at personally. I do, like from a Sunderland fan's perspective, which I am a Sunderland fan, I, I love looking at it. Like to me, it is my home, to me it's everything, but if I'm being 100% honest, yeah. Maybe I'm being a bit biased here, but just let me let me run through it. Forty nine thousand seats, the concourse, the flags that go by, like everything about it screams success. And as much as we haven't had too much success in this ground, or any for that matter, um, I feel like we are setting ourselves up for success with this. Um, and I feel like this ground is built for giants, and that's what London are. We are a giant club. We are a massive club, and we need to get back to winning ways. And hopefully, with the stadium light, like, we can do that. But yeah. I love it so much, I wish I got to go to Roker Park but sadly I didn't, um, but I'm somewhat thankful that it got knocked down because this got to be built and I do adore this stadium as much as uh, um, maybe it's not number one on the list. In fourth place, built in 1924, it is the best club and the best team in London, it's Crystal Palace. If you know anything about me, you know I have a massive soft spot for this team. I just love the ground, I love everything about it and the reason for that is just like look at it, right, realistically it's got one stand with two like parts to it and it looks massive and that's where the ultras go, then you've got the family area um, where you've got like bringing your kids to the match and you get a witness, the unbelievable fans that South London has to offer and they are the best fans in London, um, I don't think there is a debate for that in my eyes, um, but yeah just everything about it, it screams football, it screams like London in my eyes and um, but yeah I adore it third place Craven Cottage built in 1896 what a ground like, I don't understand why I love it so much but realistically like that one stand with all them pillars and then it's got the like little triangular thing above it and it reads Fulham Football Club and then the outside is like Edwardian with like bright orange bricks and like the black turnstiles and like the house and the state that it's in and I hate the fact that they're redeveloping it I know they need to but for me like this was so perfect beforehand and I think now it looks a little bit too modern but I still love it as a ground I still think it's definitely up there um but yeah this to me is just a cracking ground and I really don't see anything wrong with it. I hate the people that say like, oh, it's small, it's bad. To me, like, the only thing that makes a bad stadium isn't the capacity. It's like, if it's too modern and like the looks of it, like, you can have like modern good grounds and you can also have historic bad grounds. But to me, it's got nothing to do with capacity, which makes a stadium great. I think that's something that a lot of fans of big clubs seem to forget. Like the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, it's so wide, it's so big, but it's ugly. It looks like a spaceship. It's a horrible ground. It looks like a massive UFO has landed in the heart of Northern Ireland. Why would anyone want that? I don't understand. To me, it's all about historic grounds and history filled grounds. Why Harley was perfect? There was no need to build anyone. Second place, built in 1897, it's Villa Park. This ground is something else. The whole end is one of the best things in Premier League football. The burgundy and blue, we've seen it done before, but Aston Villa do it perfectly. The ground's so modern feeling, yet we know, obviously, once again, it's so old. And the thing that does it for me, although the inside is unbelievable and I love it and it looks like, like a mini Old Trafford, if you will, the outside makes it the second best stadium in English football. The bright orange bricks and the steps leading up to it. And then on, you go even further back than that and you look at the massive gate to enter what realistically is a palace, what is like a place
least made for kings and no wonder we have princes um, supporting this club because it is a club made for just the I don't know I don't know what I'm saying but I do love it so much and I just think the feeling on the outside and then the inside and then just the overall like ground itself yeah to me it's it's unbelievable and the best ground in English football built in 1899 it's Hillsborough, 39,000 seats. The reason I'm putting this as number one, and I've got many reasons for it, is the cop there is just genuinely, I think that's the best stand in English football. With the two blue pillow, pillows, pillars, and it reads out SWFC, um, and like just everything about it, like the stands go so far back, it's not too tall, it's not modern, I like at all. If anything, it's very, very like rustic feeling. and yeah just everything about it i love it so much um and as a sunderland fan like i watched the playoff final and i was obviously thinking like i want to beat this team i want to battle them like i want to realistically um get through the final but i was also thinking in the back of my head through all that through all that pressure i was thinking this is unbelievable this ground is phenomenal like i couldn't help think wow what a stadium and i couldn't help think like this must be amazing to be in that crowd like with you like they, when they had the flashlights on and everything just looked so picturesque um, but yeah Hillsborough to me is the best stadium in English football um, and I'm obviously not seeing that because of what happened like it's dreadful what happened and the fact that they've still got this ground and they've redeveloped it in a way where it's safe for everyone who goes there and people can still enjoy football here and there isn't like a dark loom over it it still has bouncing and it still has like soul filled is unbelievable but yeah obviously condolences to the 96 i believe it was 97 i'm not sure i do apologize for that but yeah just the fact that that happened and this can still like be one of the best ground in english football in my opinion is just a reason why sheffield wednesday are the best club in sheffield and a reason why they are um what they are like this club is unbelievable and as much as i hate to see it yeah the mighty owls <laughs> what a club but yeah, that's basically going to be the video. I feel like I've been the most passionate I've ever been in my life. I don't know what just went through me, but the absolute rants have came out of me. A lot of it might have been came across as this guy's talking pure waffle. But I promise I wasn't. I promise I do. Actually, I am actually this passionate in real life. Like, um, but yeah, I appreciate all the support, guys. And realistically, just I uh, have a fantastic day. I was going to do that thing with my hand again. Um, but that is very uh, strange, so I won't do that. Um, but yeah, thanks guys.